three are together in my name, there shall I be in the midst of them. Jesus Amen. said that. Thank you, Lord. So Jesus is with us here tonight. Yes, he is. His spirit is here with us tonight. He's going to give us a word for us tonight. And we're going to pray for those who are not here. Father God, we just lift up all those who are not here. Father, touch them. If they, if they have sickness in their body, if they're just staying away from the storm, Father, be with them. Keep them safe, Father, and on the roads. And be with them in their houses, Father. And heal their bodies. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you all praise and glory. Father, I pray that you'll open our eyes and give us revelation tonight, Father, yes, Lord. by the power of your word. And I thank you for your goodness, your grace, your mercy. And I just pray for the anointing to be upon me, Father, to speak your word in boldness and in truth, that we all might be set free. And I give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. I don't know where to start. I've got six pages of scriptures. I used to just have like a little post. <laughs> yes. I'm getting more and more. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm never getting done. God's good, isn't he? Yes, he Amen. Is. I'm going to kind of hit this because somebody's been asking me about this and it started my study and and uh, a lot of people, they believe, a lot of people nowadays, they believe that we shouldn't listen to the teachings of Jesus and that we shouldn't listen to the teachings of any of the other apostles, that we should only listen to the teachings of Paul because Paul was an apostle to the Gentiles. And if we're Gentiles, then they think that he's our apostle. And so they think we should not listen to Old Testament. Paul preached out of the Old Testament. Did you know that? Paul quoted out of the Old Testament all the time because Paul told Timothy that all Scripture is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. The only Scripture they had when Paul said that was the Old Testament. That's right. And when Cornelius, this uh, not a Cornelius, but when uh, there was this guy named uh, Apollos, and he was a very eloquent preacher and there was a lot of people that followed his teachings but he was he was powerful in the word and he taught from the old testament about jesus and led people to christ through the old testament because the old testament foretells everything that jesus would come and do everything that he did it was prophesied in the old testament so so paulus he used the old testament scriptures to preach jesus there was a guy named Philip, and he, he was an evangelist, and he was out preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the, and the Lord spoke to him. He said, I want you to go to a certain place. And, and so he led him by steps to get to this Ethiopian eunuch out in the desert. And so he went out there, and he obeyed God each step. And he got out to that Ethiopian eunuch. And that Ethiopian eunuch, he was sitting there reading from the book of Isaiah. Chapter 53. And he, he preached Jesus to that Ethiopian eunuch from that scripture in the Old Testament and led him to the Lord. He got born again. Hallelujah. History tells that he went back to Ethiopia and he led a whole bunch of people. And there's still Christians in Ethiopia today that are descendants from that where he was saved there on the, on the outside of a city that he was in. So first I want to look to Luke chapter 16, verse 16. Luke chapter 16, verse 16. If you get there, say, I'm there. 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 Now, this, if you have a red letter edition, this is going to be in red. That means Jesus is saying this. Now, Jesus, Paul, the Apostle Paul, said that the, the doctrine, the foundation that God gave his holy apostles and prophets to reveal his word to us. And he said, and Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. He said it's built upon the foundations, doctrines built upon the foundations of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. That means he's what holds everything together. Jesus said, I only say what I hear the Father say. I only do what I see the Father do. So everything Jesus said and did was the word of God, the word of Almighty God. Now Peter said one time, he said, we heard, we heard God speak out of heaven on the holy man at the holy mount. 
and where Jesus went up to be transfigured. And God said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. He said, we heard that with our own ears. He said, yet there's a more sure word of prophecy. The Holy Scriptures. Amen. So we can have a sure word from God, what the Holy Scriptures say, because God gave them to his prophets and to his apostles by the Holy Ghost. And then Jesus trained up some apostles to be ministers to, to after he was gone to preach the word to people so we could get saved, so we could get delivered and set free. Jesus did. And he, he started out with 12, but he, he had a whole bunch of disciples. A lot of people think of his apostles as disciples, and they were part of his disciples, but he had lots of disciples. Matter of fact, he had to pray all night one night to figure out who to make apostles. Why? Because he was following Father God in everything he did, in everything he said. So he prayed all night, and then he, he, decided, and he named off which ones were going to be his apostles. And God picked them out. Father God did. Even the son of perdition. And Jesus said, I've kept all those except for the one, the son of perdition. And he left. So there was 11 of his 12 left. And then in the New Testament, later on, and Paul said, I was born out of season. You know, I was not around when Jesus was walking around. So he said, I was born out of season. But Jesus appeared to him on the road to Damascus. He was persecuting the church. And he saw a, bright, a light that was brighter than the sun shine around about him. He said to him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He was struck down. They were all struck down from their horses. All the, the whole company was. And they all heard a, a loud noise when Jesus spoke that. But Saul, Saul heard him speaking. And he was struck blind. And he said, Who are you, Lord, that I'm persecuting? He said, I am Jesus Christ whom thou persecutest. And then he called him into ministry right there. And he sent a man to lay hands on him, heal him from his blindness and that he might receive the Holy Ghost. And so Paul did receive the Holy Ghost there. And later on in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, he said, I speak in tongues more than ye all. Now would that ye all speak in tongues. So Paul spoke in tongues more than us all. And he would that we all speak in tongues. Paul had a lot of revelation from God. But Jesus also taught his disciples the revelation of the kingdom. Say the, say the mystery, mystery of the kingdom. Okay. So he, God gave it to them by revelation. Now when Jesus taught his disciples, a lot of them really didn't get what he was saying. He would come right out and say, I'm going to be crucified. And three days later, I'm going to raise Christ from the dead. He said it plain like that. He told them over and over again. And still, when it happened, they didn't, they didn't understand. They, were, they weren't born again yet. On the day that Jesus rose from the dead, he immediately went to his disciples and he breathed on them. He blew his, he blew his spirit into them when he breathed on them. They were born again by the Spirit of God. From that point on, and then on the day of Pentecost... When the day of Pentecost was fully come, there appeared unto the cloven tongues as a fire went set upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they had thousands of people that came together around what was going on. And, then they, and Peter got to preach on that day to thousands of people. And I think 3,000 people, or maybe 5,000, gave their lives to the Lord that day. 3,000 of them. That day. And he was preaching the same message Jesus was preaching. It is the same message that is the gospel. Turn away from your sins and turn to God. And he'll make you new. He'll forgive your sins. Now the old covenant, the law and the prophets, that's what this verse says. The law and the prophets were until John, talking about John the Baptist, since that time the kingdom of God is preached and every man presseth into it. So John the Baptist preached the kingdom of God. Jesus preached the kingdom of God. Everyone ever since then has been preaching the kingdom of God except for some who are not preaching the kingdom of God. But a lot of people are preaching the kingdom of God. If they're following God, they're preaching the kingdom of God. But it started at John the Baptist. He came preparing the way of the Lord to make your way straight. 
John the Baptist came and said, turn away from your sin and turn to God. And he baptized them with a the baptism of repentance. He said, now God's not going to wink at your sin anymore. God's not going to put up with that. You've got to make your way straight. You've got to turn away from all that old stuff and cleanse your hands, you sinners, and be redeemed and set free. You've got to, to be buried in the grave with Jesus Christ. You've got to be raised up together with him in newness of life. It's the new way. It's still that way today. We've got to turn away from sin and turn to God. The Apostle Paul preached the very same thing. It's the very same message Jesus taught his disciples. Jesus began to preach. He said, repent. Turn away from your sin and turn to God. That's what he began to preach. John the Baptist, he quit. And then Jesus was right on top of it. And then Jesus, when he left, then Peter on the day of Pentecost, he was right on top of it. He was preaching the same message to those on the day of Pentecost. He said, what do we do? They said, repent. Turn away from your sin and turn to God. That's the message of the gospel. And then the mystery of the kingdom of God. And Jesus tried to teach his disciples the mystery of the kingdom of God. And really, Paul got a hold of it, probably before some of the other disciples did. But they, they, you've got to understand that they were, under the, they were under the old covenant. They were living for God like under the old covenant. And when the new covenant started, they really didn't fully understand. Even though Jesus had taught them these things, they didn't really fully understand everything yet. Jesus said, you, you have many things yet that I've got to teach you, that I've got to say to you. But you're not able to receive them yet. He said, however, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will reveal everything to you, all things. And the apostle Paul, he went and he got alone with God. And he actually got a, a better, better revelation of all this. It would just be a little hard for him to, to explain it to everybody. And so there's some people, and Paul was a very learned man. He was taught by the best teachers of the Jewish nation, the best Pharisees. One of the greatest teachers was taught, taught the Apostle Paul. And so then finally he came to Jesus. He said, all that I've learned, all that I've gained, he said, I call it, count it all as done that I may win Christ. He laid it all aside. But he was a very intelligent man. But the kingdom of God is being preached now ever since John the Baptist. So Jesus, turn with me to Mark chapter 16, verse 14. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 16, verse 14. It's right after Matthew. It's the last, it's the last at the end of the chapter of Mark. Verse 14. Now, remember how many, how many apostles he had. He had 12, right? He had 12 starting out. And afterward, af afterward, after he was ascended, afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at, at me to eat. And upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him before he was risen. After he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Say every creature. Everything. That means all people. All right? They were not sent just to the Jews. They were sent to all people. How many were there? Eleven. Now see, God, a lot of people believe that, that the Apostle Paul was supposed to be the twelfth man. They, they picked a man to take uh, Judas's place. And some people believe that the Apostle Paul was supposed to be the twelfth apostle. But there was more apostles. There was Barnabas was an apostle. The Bible says. A lot of people believe that Barnabas wrote the book of Hebrews. I, I really think Paul wrote it. But it, it, was, it was the reason it actually got in the Bible was because they believed that Paul wrote it way back there. It was attributed to Paul. So that, that's why they actually put it in the Bible because they almost left it out of the Bible. It'd be a shame if they left the book of Hebrews out of the Bible. And they almost left the book of Revelations out. And the book of James the book of John, 2nd and 3rd John, and the book of 2nd Peter. They almost left those out. And the book of Jude. They almost left all those books out. Why? Because they just thought Apostle Paul's stuff should be in there. That's a shame, isn't it? Yeah. But see, God called these holy men of God. To, and he revealed the mystery of the kingdom to them. And so, skip on down to verse 18, verse 19. He went on and said that they, these mighty works that they do, the believers, 
And so then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere. Say everywhere. Everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. God worked with them while they were out preaching to everybody. On the day of Pentecost, before he ascended to heaven, he said, And you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses of me in Jerusalem and in Judea. And he didn't start, stop there. He said, In Samaria and to, in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and into all the parts of the earth. You see, they were sent not just to the Jews, but to everybody. He, they were also sent to the Gentiles. However, a lot of them, Peter, for instance, he thought that his ministry was only to the Jews. And so he was just preaching to the Jews. The Apostle Paul, every city he went into, he preached to the Jews first. Why? Because they were God's people. And, and Jesus commanded to preach to the Jews first and then also to the Greeks, to the Gentiles. They deserved to be preached to first. Why? Because they were serving God under the old, under the old covenant. They were always serving God. And they had, deserved a chance to come to Jesus. And so Paul preached to all men. He told King Agrippa, I went to all men everywhere and told them just what Jesus told me to tell them. To turn away from their sins and turn to God and show with a changed life they actually had repented. Show with works of repentance. He actually used the works word. With works that they had turned away from their sins. He preached the same message that John the Baptist preached. He said he did. Now I have to take his word for it. I mean, we really don't know all he preached because it doesn't really give us outlines of his messages. A lot of times it says, and he preached the gospel. And then certain things happened. Good things happened. One time he was out preaching in the gospel, and he perceived by the Spirit that a man had faith to be healed. So he told the man, get up! So the man jumped up. But Peter, he moved in the power of God. He was an apostle of God. And he was walking along, and people would lay close enough to him. They would come and lay the sick close enough to him that even his shadow going over them, they would be healed. Just the anointing being that close to him would heal people. Praise your Father. Hallelujah. So God, Jesus sent them everywhere to all people. He said, preach to all, every creature. Now that didn't mean mice or cows, or sheep. I've heard preachers say they would not preach to cows. Yeah. I don't think a cow is going to get anything out of that. But it's talking about every human being. Hallelujah. They may get some practice. I personally never practiced. Maybe that's why my church isn't as full. I don't know. I, don't, I just try to flow with God, with the Holy Ghost. So they went out and preached to all men everywhere. The Lord working with them. And confirming the word. Say the word. The word. With signs following. God confirms his word with signs following. He don't, he don't confirm my word with signs following. He don't confirm Tom's words with signs following. He don't confirm TV preachers' words with signs following. But he will confirm anybody who's preaching the word of God without compromise... He will confirm the word with signs following. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He'll, he'll heal the sick. He'll raise the dead. He'll cast out devils. He enables us to do those things because it's him that's doing the work. Even Jesus said, the words that I say unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The words I say to you, they are not my words, but they are the Father's words. And he doeth the work. God does the work. I have no power on my own to heal people. I, I'll lay hands on people and they'll get healed and they'll say, Pastor Mike healed them. No. I, I say that. No, that's not me. That's God. But they're impressed with me because 
And then, but they don't want to listen to me a lot of times. <laughs> well, I preach. Because I, I, bring them, I bring them to a decision to either serve God or not to serve God. And they'll get upset and they'll leave the church. That's the way it goes. Either they can come up here and get right with God, or they can go out the door and walk away from God. I was talking to John, his, his ex-wife. Uh, we laid hands on her and she got healed of some stuff. And one time I was on mom's porch and she was there talking to mom. And she said, well, Pastor Mike killed me of such and such. I think he said it was fibromyalgia, John told me it was fibromyalgia. I said, I didn't heal you. I said, God healed you. God, did. God heals people. We don't heal people. That's right. You don't heal a person. Jesus didn't heal a person. God the Father healed people. He said, my Father. He confirms that what I'm saying is truth. God heals people. God didn't, people don't raise people from the dead. God raises people from the dead. God sets people free. God delivers people. He's the same yesterday, right. today, and forever. Hallelujah. 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 Turn with me to Mark chapter 4. Verses 10 and 11. And Jesus had just told them a, a parable about the, about the sower and the seed. And they didn't understand it. So they asked him about it. And when he was alone, they were about him with the twelve and asked him of the parable. They wanted to understand this parable that he, that he told them. He said unto them, unto you, talking to the twelve, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that were without, all these things are done in parables. So Jesus came to teach his disciples, his apostles, the ones he called to be apostles. He came to teach them the mysteries of the kingdom of God. The mysteries of the kingdom of God. And he did, he did as much as he could while he was there with them. But the truth was, they didn't really get it yet. But until they got the Holy Ghost, then the Holy Spirit started revealing them unto these things unto them. And they, then they got it when the Holy Spirit revealed it to them. And then they understood it to a, a greater degree. The Apostle Paul, he got great, great revelation. He went alone and got with God. And the Lord taught him. Some of the things the Lord taught him, the Lord has taught me over the years. Years ago, like 32 years ago, maybe maybe longer, the Lord spoke to me and he said, I don't want you to watch those TV preachers because I was learning everything I, I knew from every other ministry. You know? He said, I don't, and I read all the guys' books. I read Kenneth Hagin's books. I read all the faith guys' books. And, I was learning all my stuff from those guys that I knew. And I was getting great revelation, like from Kenneth Hagin. He had a lot of good stuff that I got good revelation from. But it was really the Holy Spirit that gave me the revelations. But then the Lord spoke to me, and he said, he said, I want you to quit reading other people's books, and I want you, I want you to quit watching TV preachers, and I want you to let me teach you. And so I said, okay, Lord, I'll do that. And since then, the last, I mean, the word of the Lord still comes to me on a regular basis, almost every day, and teaches me stuff. Just more and more and more. The more you learn, the more light you have. Amen. And God's able to give you more and more light. Amen. He's able to give you more. Right. Hallelujah. It gets gooder and gooder. Yes, it does. Matter of fact, years ago, this may be 12 years ago, the Lord gave me a vision about us being in Christ, positionally in Christ. And he showed me that everything that Christ did for us was in Jesus Christ, and that we have to be in Jesus Christ to have access to those things, positionally in Jesus Christ. Now, the Apostle Paul said that that was one of the mysteries of Christ, 
us in Him. Us being positionally in Jesus Christ. That's one of the, that is really the main mystery of Jesus Christ that Paul got. And he, if you read all through the Bible, it taught, and he didn't just get that revelation. Jesus told them about that revelation. His apostles, it says over and over, if you abide in me, in me, positionally, in me. He said, in my words, abide in you. Then you can ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Abide means stay. So we have to choose to stay in Christ. I can walk away from Christ anytime I want to. It's just I don't want to. But I could if I wanted to, but I don't want to. Tom said he don't want to either. I want to live for God the rest of my life. Amen. I mean, I, I've got the choice. God made us free moral agents. You can choose every day. You get to choose, am I going to serve God today? And the choice you make this decides whether you're on the path to heaven or whether you're on the path to hell. One day you can just wake up and the devil can deceive you like he did Adam and Eve. And you can die and go to get into sin. But God made covenants with them so they could get back right with him. And any time they, they, he made a way where they could just stay in covenant with him, they could go and make sacrifices. And without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. And so Jesus came to be this one sacrifice once and for all that all men, all they have to do is repent, turn away from their sin and turn to God. And repenting doesn't mean I'm sorry. It means I am turning away from that. I need help to get delivered from that. And then Jesus helps you because Amen. he is in you. We're in him. We're positionally in Christ and he is positionally in us if we're a child of God. In Romans chapter 8 it says if the spirit of Christ is not in you, you're not one of his. Now it's a positional thing of being Christ being in us. We are immersed into Jesus Christ. That's what water baptism represents, our immersion into Jesus Christ. We're an old man of sin, is dead and buried in the grave with Jesus, and we've been raised up together with him in newness of life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. It is given to you to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that were without, all these things are done in parables. I quoted to you Acts 1.8, which is that's where he said you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses of me in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And then Acts chapter 10, the whole chapter deals with uh, the Apostle Paul. And God showed up at this guy's name, this Roman centurion, his name was Cornelius, and he was, had a heart for God, but he, he wasn't born again. And he prayed to God all the time, and he gave alms, much alms, and they went up as a memorial before God. And God sent an angel to Cornelius' house, and he told him, I want you to go to this certain house in this certain area, in this certain city, and find a, a Simon Peter there. And he's going to give you words where you can that, that you get, can get saved, that you can get delivered, you can get set free. An angel showed up and said that. And so he sent men to, to Peter's house. Peter was actually with Simon the Tanner. So he was up, the, it was about noon, and he was up on the roof praying. And he and he while he was up on the roof praying, because he was waiting for, for the ladies to fix food down there. I don't know if it was just ladies, could have been some men, I don't know. He was waiting for him to fix food. And so he was up on the roof. And he was praying. And the Bible says he went into a trance. In other words, he saw, he saw into the spirit. And God showed him three times. Uh, like it was a sheet. Like that had all kinds of unclean animals in it. And God said, take and eat. He said, I don't have never touched those things. That is unclean. I won't touch it. And God did that three times. And then God said to him, he said this, if I call something clean, you, you do it. If I call it clean, it's clean. And just because you've been taught that way doesn't mean that's, that's, not, that's unclean. If I, say it's, if I say it's clean, it's clean. And by the time he got done with that, these, these people from Cornelius' house, was at the door knocking. 
And God said, there's guys down at the door knocking right now. You get down there and you go with them and you tell them words where they can get saved. And so Paul, Peter obeyed God. He went down there and here they are at the door. Isn't that amazing? And so he went with them. Now he, he didn't believe, and he had some other Jewish brothers with him. And he didn't believe that God would save the Gentiles. Somehow he missed that. He heard Jerusalem and Judea, but he didn't hear the Samaria and the other most parts of the earth. He missed that part. They thought Samaritans were dogs. So here they went to Cornelius' house. And he preached the gospel. And God poured out Cornelius and those with him. They all received Jesus Christ. Yes. And they received the Holy Ghost. Yes. And they started speaking in tongues. And they knew they'd received him because they heard them speak with other tongues. And then they said, the other ones that were with him, they were astounded, the Bible says. Because upon Gentiles, God poured out even the gift of the Holy Ghost. And then Peter said, well... We ought to be able to baptize them in water. They're already saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. They thought water baptism at that time was a really important thing. However, really the baptism Jesus was talking about was our immersion into Jesus Christ. The word baptize means immerse. And Paul said in Romans chapter 6, he said we're baptized or immersed into Jesus Christ as a positional thing. That our old man of sin is dead and buried in the grave with Jesus and we've been raised up together with him in newness of life. So therefore we should walk as our old man is dead. And we should count that we're dead to sin. And we should reckon that we're dead to sin and alive unto God through Christ Jesus. So here Peter finally got a hold of this. At Cornelius' house. Turn with me to Romans chapter 11. We'll start with verse 22. Thank you, Father. Romans chapter 11, verse 22. And this is the Apostle Paul who wrote this. And behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God. And you see, what happened is God made it where there was not Jews and Gentiles. He made it where we're all now one in Christ Jesus. God has reconciled us together and reconcile both the Jews and the Gentiles together in Christ Jesus. Behold the goodness and severity of God on them which fail, talking about the Jewish people that did not re receive Jesus, on them which fail severity, but towards thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness. In other words, if you keep walking with God, then, then his goodness is upon you. Jesus said, if you abide in me, then if you abide in me, if you stay in me, that's what Jesus said, then you can ask what you will and shall be done unto you. If thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. In other words, if we decide not to stay in God's goodness, not to stay in Jesus, we'll be cut off just like the Jewish people were because of unbelief. But, but, they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, they shall be grafted. In other words, he said they can still be grafted back in to Jesus if they will get out of their unbelief. It's all a matter of the choices we make. Do I choose to follow God? Or do I choose to, to follow the devil? You know, most people won't say, I'm following the devil. Just think, but Jesus said you can't serve two masters. Either you're going to love one or hate the other. Or you're going to be, if you, if you don't love God, then you're going to be following the devil. There's no other way. Either you're following God or you're following the devil. Even though you don't admit you're following the devil, you still are. That's what God says. He said, for God is able to draft, draft them back in again. God can do all things. For if thou were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree. Talking about the Jewish people. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest any should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. Now turn with me to Romans chapter 16. 
I got a lot of scripture. We're going to read through it. Romans chapter 16, verse 25 and 26. Now this is still Paul talking. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Now we all understood the mystery. Jesus told his disciples, it's for you to know the mystery of the gospel of the kingdom. The revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but is now made manifest by the scriptures of the holy prophets, by the scriptures of the prophets. In other words, God has revealed his word, his mystery, now in these last days. I mean, the last day started the day of Pentecost. That was when Peter said, this is that which is spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last day, saith the Lord, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. And on your handmaidens and servants shall they prophesy. Do mighty words. But now is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations, say all nations, all nations. for the obedience of faith. So we're all reconciled to Jesus Christ. When the Jewish people rejected him, then God said, well, go to the, go to the Gentiles. I mean, still go to the Jewish people. When the New Testament church first started, all there was was... They didn't have churches like we have today on every corner. we got churches there on every corner today. But, but they didn't have that back then. They had like Jewish synagogues in every city because that's where the people who were following God would go to worship. And people on the big holy days, they went to Jerusalem from all over the world. They had thousands and thousands and thousands upon thousands of people would go to the temple in Jerusalem for like holy days. Because in the holy place, in the Holy of Holies, that's where the Spirit of God would come down into, to the Holy of Holies. Now we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. When Jesus hung on the cross, the veil of the temple was tore from right down the middle, from the top to the bottom. It was real thick. It was some a cloth that could not be tore. And it was ripped by the hand of God, I believe. God ripped it right down the middle. And, and it says, now God doesn't live in the temple made with hands. Now we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. No, you're not. No, you're not. You are the temple. No, you're not. No, you're not. You are the temple. No, you're not. No, you're not. You are the temple. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians. Chapter 2. We're going to start with verse 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. That's dunamis, miraculous power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the miraculous power of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that come to naught. He said, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Say a mystery. A mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world had known. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man those things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed, say hath revealed, them unto us by his spirit for the spirit searcheth all things yea the deep things of god now turn with me to ephesians chapter 3 verses 3 we're going to start here we're going to go down to verse 12. it's good isn't it yes. god's word's good isn't it yes. praise you father now the apostle paul he went out into the we went out into the eric to the desert of arabia and he spent years out there praying and getting direction from God and letting God teach him. God taught him by the Holy Ghost. I used to believe that Jesus just appeared to him and taught him. 
Now, he did on the road to Damascus. He appeared to him and taught him on the road to Damascus. However, I always used to think Jesus appeared to, to the apostle Paul and taught him. And one time the Lord spoke to him. He said this. He said, you've always believed that I appeared to the apostle Paul. He said, I didn't. Now, he did on the road to Damascus, but he didn't like when he regularly taught him. He said, I taught him the same way I teach you, by the Holy Ghost. That's the main way God teaches us, is by the indwelling of the Holy Ghost, by him speaking to us, to our hearts, by the Holy Spirit. He leads us and guides us. Hallelujah. Ephesians 3.3, 3, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. Say the mystery. Mystery. As I wrote afore a few words, whereby when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages were not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed to who? Who is it now revealed to? Unto his holy apostles, that's plural, and prophets by the Spirit. His holy apostles and prophets. So... Did all the apostles and prophets get this revelation? Yes. God's still revealing it to his holy apostles and prophets. The same revelation. Hallelujah. That's a good thing, right? Amen. God still has some apostles and prophets. What does he do? He calls them. He calls them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Thank you, Lord. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. That's due to this miraculous power. Unto me who am also the least of all the saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make and to make all men see all men see was the fellowship of the mystery Paul was called just like the other apostles was called to preach to all men everywhere the Jews and the Gentiles all men everywhere. The fellowship of the mystery. So they may understand what Jesus came and did for them. From the beginning of the world, he has, it has been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ. John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God, and all things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. Jesus made all things. Hallelujah to the intent that now and to the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence. Once this says by faith of him, but some translation says by the faith in him, by faith in Jesus Christ, that we have access both with boldness and have confidence. Turn with me to Ephesians 6, 18, 19, and 20. I'm not going to get through all these tonight. But... This is the Apostle Paul again. Praying always, all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Every child of God, every believer is a saint. A lot of people think just the Jewish people are saints. They are not. Everybody who names Jesus as their Lord, you are a saint. The, Catholics, the Catholic Church thinks there's just certain saints and you have to do miracles. That's baloney. Every child of God is a saint. The Bible calls us all saints. Hallelujah. Say, I'm a saint. I'm a saint. And a king and priest. It said Jesus said so in Revelations, right? That's right? We're kings and priests in Christ Jesus. That's right. 
And for me that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Now, we're turning me to Colossians. This is probably the last one I'm going to get to, but I may get to something else. Colossians chapter 1, verse 25. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Wherefore I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. This is Apostle Paul speaking. Even the mystery, say the mystery. The mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but is now made manifest to his saints. Say, I'm a saint. I'm a saint. To whom God would make known was the riches of his glory, of this mystery among the Gentiles. And then he tells what it is. Which is Christ in you. If you look up this word in, is a positional thing. In other words, Christ is in us. Another scripture says he's... God shed the spirit of his son into our hearts when we make Jesus Lord of our life. The Bible says Jesus breathed on his disciples. And when he did that, his spirit went into them. And they became alive with the life of God. Just like in the beginning, God breathed into the nostrils. And that was Jesus. Because Jesus was the creator. He breathed into the nostrils of Adam and Eve. And they became living souls. They became alive unto Father God. When they decided to sin, they were separated from God. They died spiritually that day. So the mystery of the gospel is Christ in us, the hope of glory. Whom we preach warning every man. Say every man. Every man. Every man. Paul preached to everybody, not just the Gentiles. Matter of fact, every city he went into, he first went into the Jewish temple in that city. That was the church. And he, he preached Christ in every city to the Jews first and then also to the Gentiles. Whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Amen. Paul said in... Over and over, he said that it's all about Jesus being in us. It's all about us being in Jesus, Jesus being in us. Jesus was praying one day, and I think this is in John chapter 17. He was praying to his father one day. He said, Father God, he said, I'm praying for my disciples here. He said, but I'm not just praying for them alone, but I'm praying for all those who will believe through them. I'm praying that you would help them, that you would cause them. Father, he said, I'm in you and you're in me. I pray that they would be one in us, yes, amen. that we all would be one together. Paul came preaching reconciliation unto Father God. The apostles all preached these things. Everything Jesus taught is profitable for doctrine. Everything in the Old Testament is profitable for doctrine except the civil ceremonial rules and regulations that were nailed to the cross with Jesus. Like the new moons and Sabbaths and holy days, those are nailed to the cross with Christ. The food, all the food things, they were all nailed to the cross with Christ. They all represented what Jesus would do for us at Calvary. He came to break the power of bondage and sin in our lives. He came to make us whole, and in Him is no sin. He came to deliver us from the power of sin and unrighteousness. But we have to decide to live for Him and walk with Him. We've got to decide to stay, lay off all the old stuff aside and walk in Jesus. And He will enable you to do what He called you to do. He's mighty God. He's mighty God. Thank you, Lord. That's my message. Amen. Thank you, John. Well, glory. glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My birthday is the day after tomorrow, Amen. and I will be 59 years old. And I'm just getting started. I'm just getting started. It's getting gooder and gooder all the time. Isn't God good? Yes, He is. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father.
God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Bless